Buckle up, everyone. You are strapped in and ready for the Insurance Hour with me, your host, Carl Sussman, informing, educating, and entertaining Californians one policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so, so much. Phone lines are open. 559-656-0317. You can call or text that number, or you can send us a question in to questions at insurancehour.com. If you want to join our text group, you can. Just send a text to 567-4-CARL. That's 567-367-5275. We want to keep you in the loop with everything insurance related. We don't spam. You don't worry about that. But if you're looking to get information, it's a great resource. I think it's a great resource anyway. Today, we are going to jump right in and we're going to go through listener emails because again, uh, I'm way behind on them and I do not want to ever miss any. So if we get calls, we'll take a break from the emails. We'll go right back into them after the call. For right now, let's get right into the first email. To save time, I had some great feedback, by the way, from last week's show. People were saying, you know what? I don't need to know what the person's name is on their email. I don't need you to specifically read the entire story. Just get to the question, give us the answer, and let's move on from there. So I've gone through and I've edited these down a little bit to their component parts. So hopefully you're going to hear just the question itself. You'll understand what they're asking and we'll be able to go from there, all right? So first one says, I'm a new driver and my car insurance premium are high. Is there any way I can lower my rates? It's a good question. One of the things that we find in the insurance world is that insurance companies like to charge premium based on what the actual risk is. And what do you suspect would be a higher risk if you're going to be insuring a driver? Would it be someone that's been driving for 20 or 30 years or someone that has just received their license in the last month or two? Well, it makes logical sense. The person that has just received their driver's license probably more likely to be involved in an accident than someone that has more experience, a little more driving experience under their belt, right? So what can someone do that's just received their driver's license and their premiums are high? Well, the first thing to do is realize why. And hopefully I've helped to explain that. It's not that you're being discriminated against. It's simply a matter of statistics. And the odds are less experience, not as good a driver. More experience, a better driver. Now that curve actually does shrink because when you get to a certain age, it starts to go the other way. Our reflexes start to slow down as we get older. We might need glasses or thicker glasses or contacts or who knows what. And eventually, there's, uh, there's some arguments that are out there that after a certain age, people should not be allowed to drive because their, their reflexes are so slow and just in general, they're not safe behind the wheel. So first of all, you have something in common with your elders, right? You're paying more for insurance. So what can you do to save money as a young driver? The first thing that you can do is check with the insurance company and find out if they have any discounts that you're eligible for, even though you're a younger driver. For example, Younger drivers tend to be in high school. One of the things that insurance companies will do is they will offer good student discounts. Good student discount basically says that, look, this is a, and again, it depends on the insurance company. It could be A average, B average, just depends, but they're going to have better than average GPA. Statistically, the insurance carriers have found that those students tend to be better drivers than those that are not. Who knew? Well, you know now. Those are discounts you can look for. You can call the insurance company or check with your agent or broker, find out is there a good student discount. Another discount you might be able to get has to do with the vehicle usage. Now, some insurance companies will assume the car that the most expensive car that is on the insurance policy, even if it's the one your parents might be driving, is the car that you're driving. What you want to do is make sure that the insurance carrier knows which vehicle you're driving. A lot of times parents will buy or a used car or a less expensive car than they're driving, which makes sense, right? They've, they've, been, they've earned it, hopefully. And you're getting charged a premium or, or to more to the point, maybe your parents are, where the insurance carrier is assuming that you're on the more expensive vehicle that you're driving. It's called being rated as the highest rated driver. So what you can do is let the insurance carrier know you don't drive that car you drive the other car, the less expensive car. That can make a huge difference. Another thing you can do to save money is check out the usage. Are you just driving your car after school? Do you basically just take it to your friend's house and back? Or maybe you run an errand or two with your parents and that's really it? Or 
are you driving the car to school every single day and to football practice and to water polo matches that you like to support? The amount of time you actually spend on the road, and this is measured by the odometer reading of the vehicle that you primarily drive, is something that can drive the insurance cost fairly significantly. So check on that, find out about the usage of your vehicle, how many miles the insurance company is assuming that you're driving, be sure that it's the vehicle you're actually driving and not just the one that happens to be the most expensive. Okay, hopefully that helps. Next question is what's the difference between term life and whole life and which is better for a young family? Well, we could do an entire show on life insurance. There's always a few questions that come in uh, that I'm reading through that are about life insurance. And there's there's two types of life insurance in very general terms. There is uh, terms, oh, what a pun, in very general form, right? You have life insurance for a particular period of time, or it's called a term, and you have life insurance that is designed to go longer than a specified term, okay? Now, term insurance tends to be inexpensive, meaning less expensive out of pocket than permanent insurance. That makes sense because it's for a finite period of time and they tend to only be offered to younger people, right? You can't be 80 years old and buy a term policy because not going to happen. Whereas permanent policies, which could be whole life or universal life, are designed to be in force until you die with several caveats between, but in general, they're not with a specific expiration date. Unlike you and I, we have a definite expiration date. Those permanent life policies don't necessarily all have that. Now, those policies, the permanent policies, may be more expensive out of pocket. However, you're getting more benefits from those because you're getting the ability to have cash accumulating in the policy, cash that you might be able to access while you're alive, Whereas term insurance, the only time term insurance is going to pay a penny is if you die. If you die, then the benefits from the life insurance policy get paid out. Versus in a permanent policy, if it's a cash building policy, when you're alive, you may have the ability to take money out of that. To your best, to your question, which is better for a young family? It's going to depend. It's going to depend on your finances. It's going to depend on what it is that you're looking to accomplish. It's going to depend on a lot of factors. So the best thing to do is talk to a licensed life insurance agent or broker. Tell them what it is you're trying to accomplish. Tell them what your goals are and let them navigate you through the process. You don't want to make a mistake because it's a long-term commitment either way. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll get back to your questions. This is Insurance Hour and I'm your host, Carl Sussman, we will be back in a flash. Let's talk about earthquakes for a minute. Look, we know we live in earthquake country here in California. Powerful, devastating earthquakes have happened here before, and science says that they will happen again. They can't tell us exactly when. They can just tell us that it is going to happen. Count on it. Prepare for it. Did you know that earthquakes are not covered by your homeowner's insurance policy? You need a separate policy to give you the peace of mind that you will be able to recover without getting financially wiped out the next time we get hit with a big one. There is a great company here in California that will provide you with earthquake coverage you need at a price you can afford. That company is GeoVera. I have a policy through GeoVera. I really like how easy it is to choose from all of their great coverage options, backed by the financial strength that lets me know that they will be here for me when I need them the most. Go to getquake.com forward slash insurance hour to learn more. That's getquake.com slash insurance hour. Make sure you're ready for the day when the ground shakes again. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here today. The phone lines are open to call in with your insurance-related questions. Give us a call, 559-656-0317. You can call or text that number. Or you can text our text group if you want to get some updates on insurance topics. Just text to 567 for carl That's 567-367-5275. We are going through listener questions via email today, and there are a lot of them. We're also taking your calls, don't worry, so you can call in right now. If the phone line's busy and you go to voicemail, you can leave a voicemail with your question. Also, please be sure to let me know whether you want your question played on the air or if you just want me to summarize it for you, okay? We talked about life insurance before the break, and now we're moving on to the next question. Do I really need renter's insurance if my landlord already has insurance on the building? 
Mm, that's a good that's a good question. First, I I the really need kind of makes me think, what does that mean? Do I really need it? Like, do I really have to have that policy? Well, <laughs> at the end of the day, sometimes you have to and sometimes you don't. But whether you need it is really more of a personal choice. But let me address this particular question. Now, if the landlord has insurance on the building, that means that in the event of a loss to the building, the landlord has protection. Good for the landlord. That's not going to do anything for you. That doesn't change anything for you, as a matter of fact. If if that building burns to the ground, let's just say, or a pipe breaks and, and water comes all over the place and damages your stuff, the landlord's policy is going to take care of the landlord's stuff, not your stuff. And yes, there are some exceptions to that, but for the most part. Now, what a renter's insurance policy is going to do is it's going to protect you and your stuff. You know, all the stuff you had your friends carry those boxes around, all of your precious stuff. Yeah, what'd you do? What'd you give your friends for all that help? Uh, some pizza? What is what is the going rate for dragging a friend to help you move? I, where, how many times have I heard that? That the real friends are the ones that show up when you have to move. That's, that's the barometer for what a real friend is. If they show up to help you move and we give them pizza. I think that's pretty much the going rate for helping a friend move. I digress. So renter's insurance is for you and landlord insurance is for the landlord. So your question, do I really need it? Probably you do if you've got stuff. Next question. If I work from home, does my homeowner's insurance cover my business equipment? This is a great question. There's this new thing. Uh, maybe you've heard about it. It's called work from home, remote work, all that good stuff. Work from the beach as it's known or work from anywhere. Wasn't there a company that tried to do this before the pandemic? We work. And the idea was you were supposed to leave your house to go to another place to work remotely from your employer. Now that I say that out loud, it sounds sort of stupid. Maybe that's why it failed. At any rate, working from home at, has its advantages and disadvantages. And one of them is probably just because it's overlooked. Now, the question specifically is asking, I don't want to misread it, is will my homeowner's insurance cover my business equipment? Now, the answer is it depends on your homeowner's insurance policy. However, the vast majority of them will give you a tiny bit of coverage for your business property, a little bit, like a grand or two, right? It is not going to cover the 4K monitors that you have plastered against your wall, your, v your VOIP phone, your 4K camera, all that fancy stuff. You're going to have a cap on that if you have coverage for your business equipment on the homeowner's policy at all, which you might not, okay? So it's important to get an insurance policy that's going to cover that equipment in your house. Now, take a step back. It's possible your employer already has coverage for their equipment in your possession. So before you run out and buy a policy to cover that equipment that you're using for business purposes, if that equipment is not yours, if it belongs to your employer, check with them and find out. Say, am I responsible in the event this equipment is lost or damaged, or do I need to obtain insurance potentially for that? Find out. You might need it, you might not but it's important to be aware of. One thing I can tell you is also very important when it comes to work from home, I have to bring it up even though it's not in the question, is any type of exposure liability wise. For example, if you had a customer come to your house, let's say, and they fall and get hurt, your homeowner's insurance policy is not going to protect you from that. That is a business exposure and homeowner's insurance policies do not cover business exposures. Now, this is always the question that comes back. Well, what if FedEx is dropping something off for the business? That's business related, but 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 we need to get in the weeds on that. Just understand in the event of a claim, homeowners insurance policies are there to cover um, to cover exposures that you have that are non-business related. Business insurance policies are designed to protect you for things that are business related. If you keep that in mind, in general terms, you'll be okay. But when in doubt, Check with your agent and broker and find out what's covered under your homeowner's insurance policy. Next question. How much coverage should I have on my homeowner's insurance policy? This is so generic, I'm not sure even where to go with it, but I want to at least give it some attention. What to have on your homeowner's insurance policy depends on the home, right? And you. Remember, homeowner's insurance policies are, are it's a blanket of many, many different types of coverages. It'll cover the structure. It can cover personal property. It can pay for you to move out in the event of a claim into a motel while they're doing work on it. 
It can cover your house if it's on fire. It can cover your house if a pipe breaks. I mean, there's so much going on. If somebody trips and falls on the front uh, driveway and sues you, there's so much that tends to be in it. It's difficult for me to tell you specifically what coverage and how much of it you need. This is where it's important to talk to a licensed professional. So find a local agent or broker, talk to them, say, this is my house, this is me. This is the stuff I have. This is what my house is. These are what my exposures are. And work together to find the type of coverage that you think is going to, is going to best protect you. People have different tolerances for risk, right? Some people say, you know what? A couple grand if that happens, I'm not gonna file a claim. So they can carry a higher deductible. Some people can't afford to do that. They need to know that in the event of a claim, the insurance company is going to pay as close to first dollar as possible. You have to have these conversations with the professionals and have them find a policy that will suit your needs as closely as possible. Next question. Is it worth getting pet insurance for my dog and what does it typically cover? Oh, pet insurance, pet insurance, pet insurance. It's so funny with pet insurance because I, being in this industry my entire life, you would think that I would have one particular opinion about most insurance policies, which is they're good, please buy them. I, that's how I make a living. But it's a little bit different. My relationship with pet insurance is a little bit different and I'll tell you why. Pet insurance is one of those strange types of policies that is not regulated and watched over with the same eyes that most, for example, automobile policies are. So it is really buyer beware because you might think you're buying a policy that covers something that absolutely does not. And you know, I think this warrants taking a little bit more time, but we do need to take a break. When we come back, I wanna talk a little bit more about pet insurance, things to be aware of, things to look out for, and some options that are out there that you probably do wanna have, and roughly what it might be looking like to cost. This is Insurance Hour. I am Carl Sussman, your host. We will be back in a flash. See you then. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in just a few moments, the window to the Magic Podcast Show will begin. My name is Patrick. My name is Calvin. I'm Mouseketeer Gray. My name is Paul, and I will be your guide through the wonderful world of Disney sound experiences. This show is a weekly trip into the world of the Disney theme parks and resorts. And this is the place where you get to use your ears to surround yourself with the magic. For your safety, please remain seated while listening to the windowtothemagic.com podcast. Maybe there's a name for this. Something like Disnotic Obsession. Please visit windowtothemagic.com for more information, or you can find us on Apple Podcasts and in the iHeartMedia app. Hello, hello. You are learning from Insurance Hour, and I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here today. The phone lines are open. It's such a long-standing saying. The phone lines are open, as if they're ever closed. Give us a call at 559-656-0317. Get us your insurance questions. Let me do my best to answer them for you. You can also send us your an email with your questions to questions at insurancehour.com. If you want to text us, go for it. 5674-CARL. That's 567-367-5275. It's Carl with a K, by the way. I think someone that might have their name spelled with a C, uh, they have it spelled wrong, just, just so you know. It should be spelled with a K. And certainly if you're looking to text the number 567-367-5275 uh, and it's 5674-CARL, if you're texting 5674-CARL, Carl with a C, you will not get us. And I'm sorry for whoever has that number who's probably getting every once in a while some errant text messages. Okay, we were talking about pet insurance. Now here's the thing with pet insurance. Because there's not, how's, how's the best way to put this? Because there's not so much competition in that marketplace. We're not talking about dozens or hundreds of companies that write it. The types of competition that exist are small. When there's less competition, what tends to happen to the product and the price? You'll have less coverage and higher prices. Pet insurance also is one of the strange types of insurance where as your dog gets older, the price goes up. Hmm kind of odd because as the dog gets older, I'm saying dog, it could be another animal, of course, but I'm a dog person. That's just the way it is. Don't even get me started. So as the dog gets older, the price goes up. 
as the dog more than likely would need some type of health care or there might be some some procedure that it needs, you're going to be paying more. If you get a puppy and you start paying for pet insurance, for the most part, based on the, the quick and dirty math that I've done a few times, unless something happens to the dog early on in life, you might end up paying more for insurance than you're going to be getting out of it. And I know that's a horrible thing to say because you don't want to buy a policy hoping you're going to need it because that means something happened to your pet. But unfortunately with pet insurance, it's it's a challenging one. It's a challenging one. Now I would check with three or four of at least insurance companies before you decide which company to purchase pet insurance from. It, it might be challenging to find that many, but look hard and find out certain things. Number one, how long is the premium good for? Is it a short period of time? Is it a longer period of time? Does it go up every year? Is it brackets of five years? That stuff matters. Also, some insurance companies will charge different premiums based on the breed of your pet, which again, that makes sense. That's called underwriting. We do that with people as well, right? So I guess at the end of the day, pet insurance is one of those things where if you really want to invest the time and you really want to put on your big boy pants or big girl pants and figure out the cost analysis, what you're going to pay, what would need to happen for it to pay off for you, then it might be something worthwhile. But if you're not going to really do that, you might be spending money that uh, that won't necessarily make you come out ahead. Let's put it that way. Enough about pet insurance. Next, well, it's a health insurance question. Can I keep my health insurance if I lose my job? Well, this is an interesting one. Uh, the Affordable Care Act and some additional regulations and laws that are in place do mandate you to be able to maintain your health insurance, assuming that it's a group policy that you're on for a period of time after you leave employment. Now, it doesn't matter if you're fired, doesn't matter if you quit, doesn't matter what the situation is. Actually, I'm gonna put a pin in that. It might be a little different if you quit, but I, I don't believe that there's a significant difference, but I'm gonna put a pin in that and find out for sure. The point is, if you leave your employer, you should be able to be in a position where you can maintain your insurance, your health insurance through them. If not, then you can go to the Affordable Care Act, again, depending on the time of year because there's open enrollment periods, it's, it's a whole thing. And I am not a health insurance expert, so I don't wanna to get too deeply involved in that topic, but there are options. So it should not be a determining factor. Do you stay at your job because of health insurance? And we are a unique country in so far as that is an element that people have to consider. It's a tough pill to swallow. Oh, another, another pun for the day. Sorry about that. But again, for the most part, there's something called COBRA and the Affordable Care Act. And between those things, you should be able to find a way to get some insurance for yourself while you're in between jobs. All right, next question. How does an umbrella insurance policy work and do I need one? I think we had an umbrella question on last week's show now that I'm thinking about it. Well, let me tell you what an umbrella does not cover. Everything. And I think that's a bad name for a type of insurance policy, isn't it? An umbrella. Because does that not give you the impression that it's going to be on top of everything? Well, it's not. It's on top of your liability exposure. So this is the liability that protects you in the event of lawsuits. OK, this is something you're going to see an umbrella policy being triggered for. Now, interestingly enough, it was rare years ago for an umbrella policy to have a claim because you would have to exhaust your underlying liability insurance before that would trigger coverage on your umbrella policy. Now, especially depending on certain districts where lawsuits are happening, umbrella policies are literally being tapped on frequently. This is not something that insurers are necessarily comfortable with because the products are not priced that way. It's difficult to price a million dollars, for example, if that's a, an umbrella policy, because how do you price a million dollars if the likelihood is you're going to be paying out something in the next five or six or 10 years? No one's going to be able to pay for it. So umbrella policies are good to get if you can and if you can get them at a reasonable price. I think that's where I'm going to stay when it comes to umbrella policies. Next. Oh, I thought we had a call in. We did not. Uh, I just had somebody whispering something in my ear. Uh, next one. What's the best way to compare different health insurance plans? Oh, this is a good question. Even though I'm not a health insurance expert, I will tell you like I would say to most people about most types of insurance. If you're looking to compare policies, you're looking to compare products, 
talk to an independent agent or broker about it. Yes, there is no shortage of online tools for health insurance to be able to compare plans. But it, with health insurance especially, it's, it's kind of pointless because you have to qualify for the plans. And again, there are underwriting pot, um, underwriting actions that can go into place that might affect your premium as well. Not only that, depending on where you're purchasing the policy, if, for example, you're purchasing it through the Affordable Care Act, through the ACA, then the premium might be dependent on your income. So there are an awful lot of factors involved in health insurance. And I, I tell everyone this, if you're going to be looking for health insurance, please talk to a licensed agent or broker, specifically one that works in the health insurance field. It is a dynamic field. It is changing a lot all the time. And it's a big decision. You want to be sure that you make the best out of your choice for a health insurance carrier. With that, we're going to take another quick break. And then when we come back, more of your calls, more of your emails. You are learning from Insurance Hour. And I am Carl Sussman. Be right back. Have you been dropped by your insurance agency or seen your premium skyrocket? Sussman Insurance is here to help. We are a family-owned and operated insurance agency that's been serving our community for two generations. At Sussman Insurance, we know how stressful it can be to find the right coverage, especially when prices go up or you're left without insurance. That's why we're committed to finding you competitive rates, whether it's for fire, home, earthquake, flood, auto insurance, you name it. We've got you covered. Give us a call or send a text to 310-820-5200 or visit us online at sussmaninsurance.com. Plus, stay updated on all things insurance by joining our text group. Just text 567-4CARL with a K. That's 567-367-5275 to get the latest updates straight to your phone. Sussman Insurance, your family's insurance solution. Hello, hello. You are learning from Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here today. Listen, if you've missed any part of this show, there is a lot of good information that you want to get. So jump online, search for Insurance Hour. You'll find us pretty much everywhere on local radio, on YouTube, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, tune in, you name it. We're, we're out there. Find the show from today and go back and listen to all of it because there's a lot of good stuff in there, a lot of good information. All right, phone lines are open, 559-656-0317. You can call or text that number basically 24-7. I will not answer that call 24-7, but you will get a voicemail. You can leave your question there, and I'm happy to uh, address it the next show that we have coming up, which is exactly what I'm doing now, because these are people that have emailed their questions in to questions at insurancehour.com, and I am reading those questions and giving you the best answers that I can. And with that, let's get back to it. If I, am in, if I am involved in an accident with an uninsured driver, will my auto insurance cover the damages? I put an emphasis on my auto insurance, but that's not how it's written. Uninsured drivers are a, a difficult aspect of driving right now because auto insurance countrywide is really in flux and rates are all over the place. It used to be that most carriers were in a similar range for what they charged for auto insurance. And that range not only has moved up, but it's also starting to spread out. So you're going to really need to look hard to try and find a carrier that's going to be less expensive, for example, this year than it was last year. So someone that's driving without insurance, first of all, I, I believe all 50 states have what are called financial responsibility laws. That means that they there is a law that says you need to either have insurance or post a bond or something similar in order to drive on public roads. Now, not everybody does that. So what happens if you have an accident the other person does not have coverage. This is going to vary based on state. Some states, you can purchase what's called uninsured motorist coverage. Basically, you are carrying coverage on your policy that's going to pay what the other person's insurance, if they had it, would have paid. Other states have no-fault insurance or personal insurance protection, PIP insurance. And what that will do is you're always driving around with coverage for yourself. Doesn't matter if the other person has a policy or not. You have coverage for you, the other person has coverage for them. So uninsured drivers are very much dependent how your insurance policy is going to be triggered based on what state you're in and the type of policy you have in that state. 
Some states also have issues with not just uninsured drivers, but underinsured drivers. Now, an underinsured driver is a driver that's carrying small limits of liability. We call them baby limits, limits that maybe somebody would get just to be legal on the road. But in reality, it's far from sufficient coverage to have in the event of an actual loss. And again, depending on the state you're in, some policies will pick up the difference between the policy amount that the other person is carrying and the amount that you need. That would be underinsured coverage. Okay? Check with your local agent or broker. Getting a pattern here of what to do. Let's see what's next. Uh, Okay. How do deductibles work on an insurance policy? This is a fun one. Deductible. So you buy an insurance policy, you're paying a premium, and you have a loss. Well, the insurance company will not typically pay the first dollar of that loss. There is something called a deductible, which is the amount that you are, as the insured person, responsible for before the insurance company is going to kick in and pay money. Now, why do they do that? Well, several reasons, but the main reason is to prevent people from putting in small claims. Now, you might think, well, why do they care? If it's a small claim, it's a small claim. It might be a claim where the the insurance company is responsible for paying, let's just call it $300. Okay, that's a, that's considered a small claim. Yeah, but in order to, for you to get that $300, the resources that are being utilized by the insurance company are enormous. You're talking about having to speak to a claims handler. You're talking about having to talk to a claims adjuster. You're talking about having a lot of man or woman power behind this for you to get that few hundred dollars. So in order to prevent the the, the uh, usage of those resources, which are far more than $300, insurance companies have deductible options. Now, deductibles are also a good way to save money because the higher the deductible, the more of your risk you're willing to take for yourself and not go to the insurance company for, the lower your premium, which is super cool because sometimes you might say, you know what? I can absorb a loss that's a couple of thousand dollars, right? If something like that happens, I'm not going to file a claim. I want to have my no claim discounts. I don't want the heartache. I don't want the hassle. I don't want to have a claim on my record. So the the claims up to a certain threshold, I'm going to pay for myself. And if that's the case, you can save money by having a higher deductible. Makes sense, right? So again, deductibles, It's the amount of money, the amount of risk, in essence, you are keeping for yourself and not passing on to the insurance company. Follow me? All right, what is next? Should I get collision coverage on my older car or is liability insurance enough? All right, well, we've we've got to clarify some things because I think what they're talking about specifically is not just collision, but it's physical damage altogether. There's two types of physical damage for a vehicle. There's collision coverage and comprehensive coverage. Collision coverage is going to pay for the vehicle if the vehicle's in motion. Comprehensive coverage is going to pay in the event the vehicle is damaged, not in motion, with an asterisk. So you're driving around, car's in an accident, collision coverage. Car's parked, tree falls on it, comprehensive coverage. The asterisk is most states will consider an accident where you have a collision with an animal as a comprehensive claim, even though the vehicle is in motion. The why is complicated, don't worry about it. Just understand that if you're driving somewhere and you end up in a car accident, you've struck a large animal, then the insurance carrier likely is going to consider that a comprehensive claim, which typically will be to your advantage. I know, shocking to think, but that is that is the way it is. Now, when I say animal, you might be thinking, well, what kind of animal? We're not talking about dogs and cats, typically. We're talking about deer, buffalo, bison, what other animals might be out there? It depends on where you're tuning into the show, I suppose, right? So again, liability is something you have to have legally, right? Some type of financial responsibility. And what they're asking is on my car, since it's older, do I care about physical damage to the car? And the answer is it depends on you. It depends on your threshold for risk. If you're okay saying, you know what? If this car gets into an accident, then I'm not going to worry about it. Then, okay, don't carry the coverage. But if you're going to need to get reimbursed to purchase another vehicle, you have too much invested in that vehicle, then you're going to have to continue carrying physical damage, not just collision, but physical damage on the car. You with me? Let's take another quick break. When we come back, we will get right back to your emailed in questions. You are learning from Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. 
Phone lines are open, 559-656-0317. Questions can be sent anytime to questions at insurancehour.com, and we will be back in a flash. Stay tuned. Boys and girls, in just a few moments, the window to the Magic Podcast Show will begin. My name is Patrick. My name is Calvin. I'm Mouseketeer Gray. My name is Paul, and I will be your guide through the wonderful world of Disney sound experiences. This show is a weekly trip into the world of the Disney theme parks and resorts. And this is the place where you get to use your ears to surround yourself with the magic. For your safety, please remain seated while listening to the Window to the Magic.com podcast. Maybe there's a name for this. Something like Disnotic Obsession. Please visit windowtothemagic.com for more information, or you can find us on Apple Podcasts and in the iHeartMedia app. Hello, hello. You are learning from Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here. Phone lines are open, 559-656-0317. You can also send your questions in to questions at insurancehour.com. Or shoot us a text to 5674-CARL. That's 567-367-5275. Hey, before I go on, I want to thank one of our sponsors, GeoVera. GeoVera is an earthquake insurance company that is, uh, well, let me just make it simple. I've been an insurance agent and broker for over 30 years. I know. Look at me. You would never think that. But let's just go with it, all right? And I can get my earthquake insurance from any company I want. They all want me to purchase com- their coverage because they want the broker to represent that, hey, it's my company. I have it. I have, and I have always had, my earthquake insurance with GeoVera. Enough said. Go to our website, insurancehour.com. You're going to see a link for GeoVera. Go there, get a quick quote. Very inexpensive, very, very fast. Basic information is all you need to get a quote because let's face it, we do live in areas where earthquakes do happen. All right. I had to get that out because I am thankful for their sponsorship and they are a terrific company. Before I get back to the questions, I want to make one other point. I do my best to give you the most accurate and up-to-date answers to your questions and information all the time, but I don't always get it right. I'm not perfect. So if you hear me say something that you don't necessarily think is accurate, let me know. Give us a call, shoot me an email and say, hey, you know, you mentioned XYZ and I think it's XY only, not Z. Let me research it, let me figure it out, and let me put out the word to everybody listening so they're aware. This isn't an ego thing. My goal is for you to have the most accurate and up-to-date information that there is, and I do the best I can, but I don't always get it right. So again, if you find out that you're hearing something that doesn't seem right, let me know. Even if you're not sure, say, you know what, Carl? You said something. Is that really, are you 100% sure about that? Can you get me a source to read about it to be sure? I'm great with that. I want to get the right information out to you. And if you can help me do that, I'm all about it. All right, let's get right back into the emails. Uh, Next one, I am planning an international trip. Do I need travel insurance? Travel insurance is similar to pet insurance in my brain. And insofar as there just isn't a lot of competition in the travel insurance marketplace. You're not talking about dozens or hundreds of companies, again, that offer that coverage. Travel insurance also comes in many different flavors. There's trip interruption insurance. There's coverage for emergency evacuation to get you back to uh, your home place. There are many, many uh, different um, provisions in these policies, and it is extremely difficult to compare one policy with another. Extremely difficult. And that's me who likes to read insurance policies, okay? I'm telling you, it's complicated. So if you're going to be going on a trip, what you want to do is you want to turn around and Check out two or three companies. Don't try and go further than that because you're going to get even more confused. You're not going to be comparing them to each other. Compare them to what it is you want to have. What is important? Some companies will even give you a a provision that enables you to cancel your trip for any reason. Keep in mind, big asterisk, there are lots of provisions and caveats that go into that. For example, one of them I know of will allow you to cancel for any reason, but you want to get half of the money back that you've spent so far for your trip. Well, that's not great. That's definitely in the fine print. 
So be aware when you're shopping for travel insurance, find out what it is that it covers and find out the time that you're going to purchase it and how does that impact your coverage. It's another major issue with travel insurance. When you buy it in relation to when you made your travel purchase plan, when, when you actually purchased your travel, matters. For example, if you purchase a policy on the first of the month, it makes a difference with many of the travel insurance policies. If you purchase a policy 10 days, 14 days, maybe 20 days after you've made the investment for your trip versus three days before you're leaving on your trip and you made the trip plans three months ago, it makes a difference. So the takeaway is with travel insurance, number one, look around. Number two, don't compare one to the other, compare them with what you want. And number three, look sooner than later. Look as close to the time you've made the investment in the trip as you can versus waiting until the last minute because you lose options by doing that. The sooner you purchase, the more options you're going to have. All right, let's go here to the next question. How can I switch insurance provider at any time or do I have to wait till my policy expires? Okay. Um, it depends on the insurance policy. The, the insurance policies are interesting because as long as you pay the premium during the policy period, for the most part, the insurance company can't change their mind. And again, I'm not an attorney, but there's issues of material misrepresentation and, and things of that nature. But for the most part, the insurance company's stuck with you as long as you're paying the premium for your policy period. You, however, you can pretty much leave anytime you want. Now, are you going to get a full refund if you leave? It depends. Are you going to get a prorated refund if you leave early? It depends. These are questions you can ask the agent, broker, or insurance company directly and say, hey, I'm looking to leave. Maybe I've sold the house. Maybe I've sold the car. Who knows what the case is? Find out what the cancellation provisions are because they do vary from company to company. There are state regulations that each state's Department of Insurance has enacted to protect consumers. So if they purchase a policy and they want to cancel it before the end of the policy period, they don't get stuck with a huge bill or, or anything along those lines. Most companies at a minimum will tell you up front, minimum 25% uh, earned, it's called, meaning that at least 25% of the premium you've paid is going to be kept, whether you cancel the policy the day after or five months later. So beware, ask those questions, but to answer your question literally, you can leave whenever you want. All right, let's go on to the next question. What is disability insurance? What does it cover? Disability insurance is going to pay to replace your income in the event you are unable to work, okay? Plain and simple, if you are doing your job and you are generating X number of dollars, something happens and you are no longer able to do that and you need X dollars to live, you have responsibilities, you have family, you have a mortgage, you have whatever you have, then disability insurance is designed to pay a percentage of the amount of income you had before. So if you're making $1,000, don't expect to buy a disability insurance policy that's going to pay $1,000 if you get disabled. It's going to pay a percentage of what you were making. You're not going to be in a position to buy a policy that's going to pay 100% of what you were making. There are some issues with fraud with that, right? The insurance company does not want to be in a situation where it's you're better off on a claim than getting back to work. So there's always going to be a period, uh, a, a part of your income that's going to be dropping when you go on a disability insurance policy versus the income you were generating before. There are also some tax ramifications to keep in mind, but I'm not a CPA, so I don't want to go there. So check with your insurance professional on that for more information. One more commercial and we will be right back. You're learning from Insurance Hour with me, your host, Carl Sussman. Are you feeling lost in the search for the right insurance? Making call after call, only to find no one willing to go that extra mile for you? At Sussman Insurance Agency, we understand that frustration and we're here to change your experience. Where others see obstacles, we see opportunities. While many might shy away from jumping through hoops, at Sussman Insurance Agency, we are prepared to leap, looking under every rock, exploring every avenue. That's not just what we do, it's who we are. Our dedicated team doesn't just offer policies, we provide solutions. Solutions born from persistence, expertise, and a genuine commitment to finding you the best coverage possible. We don't just meet expectations, we surpass them. If you're tired of hearing no or it's not possible, it's time to turn to a team that believes in yes and let's make it happen. 
Don't settle for less. Reach out to Sussman Insurance Agency at 877-411-5200. Visit us online at sussmaninsurance.com or email sales at sussmaninsurance.com. Let's uncover the insurance solutions you deserve. Sussman Insurance Agency, going the extra mile every time. Hello, hello. You are learning from Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here today. If you have missed any part of this show, my goodness, go find this show online again and get caught up. You can find us by going to insurancehour.com. You can go on YouTube, search for Insurance Hour. You can check on Apple Podcasts. Tune in, Spotify, Amazon. I won't say the name because it'll make your speaker start talking to you. You'll find us pretty much everywhere online. So search for Insurance Hour, find this show, and find what you've missed because this has been a a question and answer show almost exclusively and a lot of really good information here. We are in our final segment. Phone lines are still open, 559-656-0317. And, of course, you can send your questions in to questions at insurancehour.com. You want to send us a text? Go for it. 5674-CARL, 567-367-5275. Let us get through these last few questions. Does homeowner's insurance cover mold damage? Oh, mold. Oh, this is one of those topics. Um, You know, it's funny because years ago, mold was mold, period, the end. My first house that I remember purchasing, we bought a bank repossession and the wall was covered with mold. And I don't mean a little. I mean the entire wall. And I remember my my wife and I, we went there after we bought the house, of course, and we took bleach, spray bottles, and we just kind of scrubbed it all down. And that was that. Turns out there was a pipe under the ground that was leaking, and that's what caused it. But that was the extent of our mold remediation. It was the two of us with gloves and bleach. These days, we know a lot more about mold, and it can create some significant health problems and it can be very expensive. So mold coverage has come a long way where it used to just be something that was covered like any other policy would, like any other peril would be covered because of the way mold is, the way mold grows and the expense associated with it, you're going to find different policies that cover mold in different ways. For example, insurance policies typically will pay for things that are sudden and accidental. That's sort of the mantra for all types of insurance policies, right? But mold doesn't happen suddenly. It happens over time, right? Mold doesn't grow boom like that. Oh, there's the mold. No, it doesn't work that way. It takes time. However, the damage you might just notice suddenly, right? So that's the first issue that makes mold coverage a little bit tricky because it sort of goes against the general grain of how insurance policies work because it doesn't happen sudden and accidentally. The next thing is there are competing reasons and techniques for dealing with mold. There's the Carl when he was young and silly phase, take out some bleach and spray it down and life is fine, right? (laughs) And then there are the other end of the spectrum where you have companies that will come out They will put chemicals there. They will do full remediation. They may take down walls. They may do perimeter searches of surrounding areas to see where the mold might have spread. They'll use additional chemicals to kill that, uh, any other mold in areas that aren't there. They're going to take air samples to see if there's mold in the air that might be going to other parts of the house. It's very complicated and you guessed it, very expensive. So typically what you're going to find in property insurance policies is either a flat exclusion for mold or there's going to be something for mold. However, it's going to be a limited amount. It might be $5,000, period. It's not a lot. The short answer, too late. The answer for mold is you can typically see some level of coverage but depending on the extent of the damage, do not expect to become, do not expect an insurance policy to typically make you whole again if you're going to go through all of those steps to get the mold handled. It's just one of those things that is expensive and not something that you can get very extensive coverage for on a homeowner's insurance policy. Okay, next one. Do I need boat insurance only if I use my boat occasionally? It's a great question. Well, Do you need car insurance if you only drive your car occasionally? The answer is yes. So my answer for boat insurance is going to be the same. You might not take your boat out every day or every week or even every month, 
But in the event there's a loss to your boat, maybe somebody steals it, maybe it gets damaged, or maybe you are out and about using it and somebody gets hurt. If you don't have a boat insurance policy, you are not going to have coverage for that. Boats can cause a lot of damage. People can get really hurt on boats. I mean, people die all the time. And for those of you that are city slickers like me, you might be hearing that and it sounds bad. For those of you that know boats and have been around them your whole life, don't laugh at me. Of course, people get hurt on boats. You know that, I know that. But I've heard of claims from customers and, and anecdotally where people, younger people especially, can get really hurt on boats. So I, I have to say this is a this is a resounding yes. You do need to have boat insurance, both for the physical damage aspect and for the liability aspect, meaning you wanna have protection for the boat in the event something happens to it. And at the same time, you wanna have liability protection in the event somebody that is on the boat, around the boat, something with the boat gets hurt because those can be very severe claims and you wanna be sure you have liability protection for that. I think we have time for one more. How, when filing a claim, Will this cause my premium to go up? Okay, this is a, everyone loves this one, so I'm glad I can end on it. The answer more than likely is yes. If you have a claim, you can expect your premium to go up, and it's for one simple reason. You are more of a risk of having claims once you have had a claim than someone else exactly like you that has never had a claim. It's nothing personal, it's just math. It's just what the numbers show. Some people have claims, some people never have claims. So if you lose that discount for having no claims, yes, that is effectively your price going up. Sorry, don't shoot the messenger. All right, I'm going to end on that happy note about claims and premiums going up. I appreciate all of you being here today. The phone lines will be closed, haha, but you can still call, leave your message, or send us an email to questions at insurancehour.com or call 559-656-0317. Leave a voicemail with your question. I will get it and I will address it. Be sure to let me know. Do you want your question read on the air or do you just want me to summarize it? And on that note, thank you again for listening. You have been learning from Insurance Hour and I am your host, Carl Sussman. Stay safe. I do want to thank all of you for taking the time to listen today. I know insurance is not necessarily the most sexy concept. It's not the most exciting thing in the world. It is important that you understand what it is you're getting, what you should be looking for, red flags, you name it. You just need to know more than you used to. Things are more complicated than they used to be. If you have any questions, please reach out to me directly. You can email your questions to questions at insurancehour.com or call and leave a voicemail at 559 559- 6560317 educating and entertaining Californians one insurance policy at a time this is insurance hour this show is dedicated to Shamrock Papa